right, welcome back. We are going to be putting this box together in this video. So what I have here is um, three pieces that we've done, already put together, and then I'm gonna show you how to stitch this fourth one on. So it's basically just in a big line like this. And then we're gonna work on some pockets and then I'll show you how to put the bottom on with the whip stitch. Okay, but the sides are crocheted on, so just grab your main yarn, put a loop on your hook, and then line this up so that the wrong sides are together. Oh, and you can see that I've got the linings on all the pieces, as I showed, I think in the second video, I showed you how to do that. Um, might have been in, yeah, this one. So here, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna work a slip stitch in every single stitch, starting with that angled stitch that you did when you crocheted the yarn around the box. So all you're gonna do is just take that long diagonal stitch that you made before and insert your hook. Just make sure your yarn is on the outside, so kind of over the top here. All right, so in this long piece here. It's a little awkward, but this is what it's gonna look like to start. So just get these little tails out of the way. Or if you're smarter than me, start where you don't have the tails at all. But you'll have to deal with them eventually, so I figure let's just do it. Okay, so bring it through and then bring that loop through your original slip knot loop. Pull everything tight. Okay, and then go right into the next one, and we'll deal with those little flags here in a little bit. Right into the next one. Into the next one, and you can tell the next one because your yarn is coming out of the previous one there, if you can see that. Bring the yarn through both pieces, kind of make it parallel with the loop. So you want to pull the loop up and then pull that through and that will avoid any bunching. Okay, so it's in the next stitch. Pull it through, lift up on it just a little bit and pull it through again into the next stitch, pull the yarn through, okay, and it just creates this nice little cording along the side there, all the way up until you get to your diagonal stitch here and your diagonal stitch there. Then clip it and pull it through. And all these yarn ends that we have, we're gonna use those in case there's any gaps in the corners. Sometimes, like right here, you can see there's like a little gap there. We might wanna take one of these and just whip stitch it in here just to bridge that gap and make sure that that's a nice solid piece there. Okay, so now that we have the four pieces sewn together, before we pop it into a box, in other words, before we sew the first end to the last end, I wanna put some pockets in. So I'm not gonna put any pockets on the front of the box where I've got this little hole, but um, aside to it, I like a, a small pocket up here just to put buttons, um, you know, safety pins, that kind of little stuff that you might need. This is kind of great for holding crochet hooks, um, you know, your um, glue sticks, pens, this is kind of nice to have a little wide pocket. Maybe you want to tuck some extra yarns or fabrics or threads in here. And then the one thing in my original box that I didn't do that I'm um, thinking I want to do this time is just putting a pocket that straddles both pieces and, and maybe making this a little bit um, puffier, put some space in there. Because when I fold the box and I put the crochet hooks and knitting needles in here, I'm finding that those needles kind of slant in. So I think this will help keep those knitting needles when I put them in just straight up and down and that way it won't take up room in the box. 
So to do the pockets, obviously you can do this by machine. I'm just really into hand stitching right now. It's so quick to do this and it's just easier. I can just be a little bit more comfy hand stitching rather than sitting up at my machine. So um, I'm gonna take each pocket and when you're cutting the size of the pockets, just make sure that you're taking into uh, consideration the seam allowance. So I'm gonna sew a fourth of an inch of a seam. So this will be, of course, a little bit smaller and then I'll use this as the edge of the pocket. So it's a double fold of fabric and I'm gonna press it wrong sides together just so I have a nice seam at the top. And then it's just a matter of flipping the fabric inside out. And I'm just gonna start stitching along right here at the top up to a quarter of an inch away and just all the way and leave myself a little place where I can turn the thing inside out. So I've got a needle and a thread all lined up. And this will feel just like if you chose to hand stitch, it'll feel just like um, piecing, hand piecing if you've ever done that. So just a regular sewing needle and a double strand of thread. I'm picking up little tiny bites of fabric, just keeping my needle parallel with the edge of the fabric. Maybe three or four stitches all at a time and just watch to make sure that you're still about a fourth of an inch away. I just eye it up, but if you're comfortable, just go ahead and take a ruler and draw out a little stitch line for yourself. They're just pockets on the inside of a box, so I'm not gonna go too cuckoo about making sure it's all perfect and all that, but if you need that comfort, nothing wrong with it at all. All right, and when you get to the corner, just stop about a quarter of an inch away and continue on. So at the end here, I'm just gonna knot it. Flip it inside out and just run your finger on the inside. points out. You can stick a, knit, a knitting needle too to get the um, corners sharp. Okay, and then for the piece you didn't sew, just put your, insert your finger into that little hole. I always try to work on a, a surface that's got lines and measuring things so I can just use that. Give it another press. And then this one I do like to pin in place just because things do tend to shift and I want that obviously to be straight. So I've got that little open area here. I'm just gonna stitch that together as I stitch this down into the piece. So I'm just gonna take and stitch all the way around and obviously leave the top open. And then it's a nice, heavy, sturdy pocket for you. So to start it, I'm gonna come up just out of the corner. I've got a double strand of sewing thread. Hide that knot in the back. And then just like applique, pick up a piece of the background and then every eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch or so, just stitch that in place, pull slowly here directly away from that point coming out, insert it into the background, and up through the fold of that pocket. So here I'm picking up the fabric and a little bit of that Peltex underneath, so it's gonna be really sturdy. Okay, so that's what you're gonna repeat for all the pockets on all the sides, wherever you want them, however many. For the one that straddles the side, I'm gonna keep the bottom and the top open and just stitch them on the sides here. That way the knitting needles will go all the way down to the bottom, but they won't come forward and, and um, 
may take up that room in the box. You know, I want those knitting needles and crochet hooks and things to stand straight up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that. I am going to stitch the first and the fourth side together just as I showed you. And then you're gonna have this great little box that we're gonna put the bottom on next, but we're not gonna crochet that on because that is too much um, awkwardness. So what we'll do instead is whip stitch it. So I'll come back and show you that. All right, so I've got my box all put together. Pockets, this is the bottom. So this is the bottom of that one side pocket where the knitting needles will go all the way down to the bottom of the box. And I've woven all my ends in, but I wanted to just show you really quick, you know, at the corners where you can maybe see some of the, the spaces in there. Just dig down and then come back up here and you can see it kind of hides that and any of these little flags you can just cut as they stick out and what you'll do is just weave this down on the inside there and clip it okay so to put the bottom on I think it would just be way, way, way too cumbersome to try to crochet this. So I did a whip stitch matching each stitch along here. So all I'm doing here is I'm just weaving in this end. So I have a, something to start with and I'll just come out the corner Make sure you have the bottom of your box here. And incidentally, I mean, you could do this on the sides too. I happen to like the little cording that happens, so I just crocheted it, but whip stitching would be just fine. And it works pretty well if you just set it up on the table and then just simply match the stitches that are right across from each other. Just whip stitch it in place. Really simple. I might come back around and fill that little gap in there too when I get back to the other side. So make sure you're grabbing both legs of the crochet stitch with every stitch. Okay, so then just do that all the way around. Every once in a while, you're gonna get one of these little fringes that pop up, just cut it off. Okay, stitch that all the way around and then we'll work on the top. Okay, and then with the bottom sewn on, you've got yourself a fabulous little box, little stitching box, project box, I love it. So to finish out the top, First thing we're gonna do is just run some double crochets around. So all you're gonna do here is I just started in the corner. Just kind of dig it into that little corner spot there. Okay, and then just slip stitch to join. Chain two, and that'll be your corner double crochet there. And then just double crochet in every stitch going around. And you'll come up with about approximately 40 stitches. No chains or spaces or skips or anything. Just finish off the top with these double crochets. And it'll look really nice. This looks really, I keep hitting the tripod stand here. This looks really awkward, but I think you get the basic idea. So about 40 on each side and then one in the corner there, all the way around. 
And then when you get back to the beginning, just slip stitch to join in the top of that first double crochet. So now we wanna make those little corners sort of pucker up. So what we're gonna do is slip stitch in the first four just to move you over a little bit. Okay, and then you're gonna chain three, which counts as your first double crochet in your chain one. Then you're gonna skip every other stitch and double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one. Skip one, double crochet in the next. Okay, so that's gonna create the netting that's up on the top. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Okay, and then go along this side until you have 16 legs, including that first chain two that you did. And then once you have the 16 legs, don't do a chain one right here in the corner. Just do a crochet, double crochet on the other side, so you're gonna skip this whole section right here. And pretty much from the middle chain, you can count one, two, three, four, Put it in the fifth, a double crochet. And then what's cool about that is it immediately puckers out your corner for your storage glasses, your knitting needles, what have you. And then same pattern, so you just chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. So if you do that all the way around, you'll establish the first row of the little netting that tops this little Chinese lantern project basket. Um, yeah, so just do that all the way around. Make sure you have, you know, skip four or five stitches in your middle stitch and four or five stitches on this side. And then just rock that all the way around when you get back around to the beginning, slip stitch in the first space. Okay, and then it's the same pattern. So you're gonna chain three, which counts as your first double crochet in the chain one. And then in every space, just work a double crochet, chain one, And this goes so much faster because you're working in the spaces. When you get to the end of the first side, rather than chaining in this corner, we're gonna leave that open. So just chain one and then double crochet into the next space. So leave this completely open. Don't chain in here. And then continue on chaining one, double crochet in the space. And here we did chain one just to make that hole a little bit bigger because that's what we're going to use to string up the handle. So all the way around. Okay, and then as you'll notice, You've gone from 16 legs to 15 when you skip that center one. So here we're at the corner again. I've chained one, double crochet, chain one, and then continue along in each chain space. All right, then going back to the very beginning, chain one, and slip stitch 
in the first space of that row. Okay, so then the beginning of the pattern again is chain three, which counts as your first double crochet in your chain one. All right, and then you'll do the exact same pattern in all of these spaces, skipping the corners, and then you'll be down to 14. And on my first box, I went down to where I had just 12. So it's just a few more rows. Okay, and then once you get all the way around where you have just 12 legs, so that's one, two, three, four, five rows of the double crochet. What I did along the top was I'm just working two single crochets in each stitch. So I'm just towards the end here. And just two singles, no chains, no skips. Just working two single crochets in each chain space. Including the center one there. And then slip stitch to the first single crochet. And cut that and weave that in. And as you can see here, I decided to do a little chain. I had this chain, I think I just got it over at Joann's or Michael's or one of those. And it is a, just about 12 inches. So it's gonna provide a short little handle. I'm gonna do one on the other side and I'll show you how I stitch that in. But then uh, a couple other options are, you could do an I cord. And an I cord is really, really easy. It's a knitted cord where you just put a slip stitch Cast on two more, so you have three total. And I'm working on double pointed needles here because it's, you never turn the work. You just knit the three. Slide it to the other end of the needle and then knit three again. And it'll feel weird because the yarn's coming from the other side, but that's what wraps the cord and turns it into a little tube. So it's one, two, three, slide, knit three. Now, if you don't have double pointed needles, you can definitely do this on straights or circular. And if you just have straight needles, all you do is you knit the three, don't turn the work, but then just transfer those three back onto the left hand needle and knit them. And you can still see the yarn is coming from that third stitch there. So either way, and you can make this cord as long as you want to, make two of them for your handle, and sewing it on would be the exact same way that I'm gonna show you with this chain. And as you can see, it's already starting to turn into a little cord. Pretty cool, it makes a nice sturdy cord. The other thing, if you decide you want to crochet a cord, rather than just doing a chain, I'll show you an extended chain. It just makes it a little bit more solid and a thicker cord. So all you do here, chain two to start it. You work a single crochet in the first stitch, but before you bring that through the other ones, we're gonna do an extended single crochet. So you would just bring it through the first one, 
and then finish out your single crochet, which adds a little bump here. So from now on, you're gonna go into the bump. It's kind of a big hole. You'll be able to tell. But you can kind of see there's a little space between the, the extended and the actual single crochet. So you insert your needle into that, bring the yarn through, and then work another extended single crochet. So it's one, two and then in between those two you'll insert your hook again so keep it loose so you'll know where to insert your hook for the next one it's really between these two legs here dig in there and you'll find a little obvious hole the I cord and this extended chain uh, these are my favorite little when I need little handles or little cords for something flower stems they're just easy and great great looking and that's that so these are 12 inches they sure could be longer if you wanted to just obviously make them both the same and then to attach the handle whether you're doing an I cord um, a chain, the extended crochet. We're basically gonna just attach it to here and wrap it up these center spokes that you left as you were crocheting. So with the chain, I'm gonna grab a piece of the yarn that I'm working with here, and that way it's really hard to see the join. And just weave the chain in and out through these little holes. Until that one sits just at the top of the bottom chain there. Then go around that chain and through your loop and leave a little tail here because you're gonna tie a knot with that. Then you just simply wrap this four times. One. And shove that into the back. Pull this one into the back. hard to see but I'm gonna basically take tie a knot between these two ends back here and then I'm gonna weave each end down and into the bulk of this work here and that's it and that should be good and sturdy just an overhand double knot and then weave those in and then pop that on the other side and then you'll have you know two little handle so at least you can carry the box way way less awkward right the other thing you could do is go find some really cool trim i think this one's going to match my other box really well it's a flat pearl ribbon so i think what i might do is fold it in half lengthwise and then just stitch down and make it a, a pearl tube and i think that might make a really pretty handle but i'll play with that and here's a photo from Angela, her uh, Girly Fatigues colorway, she, her freeform section, and I love how soft and pretty this is. So you guys keep sharing your work. I mean, just because the project itself is over doesn't mean you guys aren't still working along, and I definitely will put them in future videos because I think everybody just wants to see different colorways and, and, and different techniques that you guys are using. Hooray, another project box, this time with handles so I can carry it around. Um, I need a lot of project boxes. I have a lot of little projects going, so it's so great to have these little boxes to, to play with. Um, as always, I wanna thank you so much for joining me, stitching along with me. I hope you found some new techniques, um, come up with some of your own ideas. 
Um, I cannot wait to return on July 4th where we're gonna do more six inch blocks, more stitching, and then I'm gonna show you how to turn those blocks into a little fabric journal of your own. So we're, we're gonna be doing some quilting, we're gonna be doing a lot of different stitches, maybe even some painting. Um, we'll just work on squares, you know, and if you guys have an idea of maybe something that you've wanted to learn and you want to just play with a little bit, shoot me an email, nittycat at comcast.net. Comment in the comments below. I'll be watching for you. Anything that you've been like, gosh, maybe I want to learn this, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and make it a six inch block. Why not just like spend the summer doing blocks and making a little journal at the end. I think that'd be super fun. For the next couple weeks, I am gonna be working on pattern writing and getting some more kits and things up on my Etsy store and also doing a video series on this land that I bought in Canyon City. It's nearly two acres with vacant houses that need to come down and they left a mess. So. Um, I got it for a really good price. I think it's gonna be worth it, but I definitely wanna document the work we've done so far and the work that is to come. So that'll be in a different channel and I will share that channel once I get that up and running. But, um, but until then, have a, a wonderful couple weeks. Um, happy stitching, stay inspired, keep working on your lantern box, and I will see you on July 4th with some new ideas. Thanks again. You guys are just the best company. Take care. Bye-bye.